Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter, with a quick tip for you today. Um, I always like to swatch out my colors when I get a new watercolor set um, and when I'm doing a review, just so I can really kind of get a feel for them before I start painting with them. And I had a lot of different swatches just kind of floating around my uh, studio, just kind of, some were tacked up on bulletin boards, some were... Um, you know, in piles and stacks. Some were taped to the inside of my my painting kits, and I decided I wanted to get them together and also um, have a place where I can save the manufacturer swatches and pigment information so that I would have all the information I need if I needed to compare a couple brands. Now that um, I get so many requests, I get probably five requests of like to do reviews on watercolors per day. It's crazy. So kind of as popularity like if I get you know 25 people ask me to review a certain brand then I will um, try to find a good deal on that brand so I can so I can review it um, so I decided I would find a way to keep them all together and I found this binder at Martin's for 99 cents and I thought it was so cute and actually when I bought it I didn't know what I was gonna use it for but um, but I realized that anything I swatched out on these 11 by 14 watercolor papers I could fold in half three hole punch and put them right in here and this is one of my Cotman, um, the new Cotman set review and then I've got my 24 Cotman set review there and I've got the leaflet that comes from Windsor & Newton in there so I have everything close together um, I put my, I took my Turner uh, swatch off the top of my palette and just stuck it right in there and then I put my whole bind in kind of again across from it because those colors they kind of seem very similar to me so I thought I'd keep them together um, these are my Magello Mission Gold and since I have a couple different lines and sets from them this is my 24 set this is the set of 20 colors that came with their the silver class which is their student line and then I've got um, the other pamphlets for the Mission Gold colors here uh, Daniel Smith which is something I really want to um, look into more I've got the six I bought the six set on Amazon the basic colors and the more I keep looking at the swatch the more I just really like the colors and I'm thinking that I'd really like to try some of their watercolor sticks so I'm kind of keeping all this information here because I know I want to really look at the colors available in the stick form and try a few of those so this is kind of also my research I just you can really see how those colors granulate and you don't see that on a swatch that's like printed off the computer or uh, sent to you in a pamphlet and these are the Dr. Peach Martin Hydris colors, which I have yet to review. I need to um, write down their pigment information because that's something I'm getting into now is, um, and I have uh, Dr. Rich Bowden to thank for that. He has really enlightened me a lot about the different pigments that the colors are made with. So instead of mixing by eye, it's kind of like mixing by eye, ver I mean, playing music by ear versus learning how to read music. Kind of eye paint by eye and knowing the, um, um, knowing the pigments would be really helpful, I think, in... Uh, you know, just determining the quality of a paint and kind of predicting how it's going to react. Um, I mean, I have a lot of experience painting, but I think I just want to know more about the pigments. I'm just kind of curious. So that is, those are the PH Martins. They're really, really vibrant and they are pigmented and they have some other colors that granulate differently than other um, colors I'm used to. So I think those I, I really want to play with. And then um, I often will compare brands because I get a lot of people asking me, especially when something new comes out like the Prima Water Soluble Oil Pastels, they'll ask me, how do those compare to my watercolor crayons. How do they compare to my gelatos? Do I need these if I have those? So um, I went ahead and tried to find the same colors in five different lines and I just swatched them out and compared them just so like, well, you know what? If you've got Karen Dosh watercolor crayons, you probably don't need Lyra. If you have gel sticks or gelatos, you probably don't need the oil pastels and vice versa. That way people could kind of get a really side-by-side -side comparison. And I thought, why throw those away after I'm done the video? I might as well keep them so that I can refer to them or even bring it back out again if it's relevant to another video. Um, and these were my, and usually this is a the thing, these are my, um, the Aqua Blend pencils by Spectrum Noir, and I really like them. Um, the, I took them, they were, they were in five different tins, I took them all out and put them together in a basket, so otherwise all my, um, tinned, all of my swatches for watercolor pencils are in the tins, are glued to the lid of the tins, but I kept these in here just because they're too big for the tins that they came with, and I keep them on my desk, so I can just grab them really quickly, because they are a light, fast pencil, and they're, as you can see, they're very vibrant, but I haven't really played that much with them, and I want to, um, I want to, to, uh, do more with them, because uh, they are, they're also a really good deal, they're cheaper than a lot of the artists, other artist pencils, and these were those student sonnet um, colors. Some are light fast, some are not. The ones I circled in black are not light fast. I found this, uh, this in a pile, the, in a pile of, you know, to be filed later objects. And then I mixed just the light fast colors together and got some really nice colors. So, you know, I like to have that. So if somebody's saying, well, should I get, 
um, Cotman, should I get Sonnet? Should I get Van Gogh? Should I get this or that? I could say, well, here's the sonnets. Here, you know, I can compare a few and I can just grab them out real quick and, and show somebody. Um, and then these are the Ganzai Tambes, which has been tacked up on my wall and I have a lot of lights in my studio and actually peeked behind the stickers that I had stuck down because I cut out the little um, wrapper and I stuck them down and I have no fading behind those stickers. I thought for sure there would be fading big time over here and it would see a really dark spot under the stickers, but I'm very impressed that these did not fade under my studio lights in the last year. And then this, you know, and I'll put little swatches, like this is just my little Winsor Newton uh, Bijou box. Um, and I just kind of mix the colors just to see what I could get for those combinations, because that's what I take in the kayak a lot, because it's so small. And uh, my comparison between the Lucas student and the Lucas professional paints. So I just, I just cut, you know, corralled all of these things. I have a lot of work to do. I have a lot of sets that I haven't swatched out, or I've lost the swatches for. So, um, so this is a big work in progress, but I can either three-hole punch things I've already done, or things I am doing. Doing, or I can slide things into page protectors if they're smaller. It's just a great way to keep your references organized. By all means, you do not have to do this to be a good painter. Um, I just think it's interesting, and if you take the time to swatch them out, why not save them so that you can refer back to them? Say if you start using another watercolor set, then you want to go back to maybe Cotman's because you've upgraded, and you want to go back to the ones that you used to use. You can have that there for your reference. It's kind of nerdy, but uh, but I like it, and it's just a great way to keep them organized. If you did the work, you might as well not throw them away. You could also also, alternatively, just get a watercolor, spiral-bound watercolor notebook and do the same thing, but I like to have this mixed media, mixed match, um, different size pages. I like that if you don't do it however you like to, but this works for me and I thought it might help some of you, so hope that helped you. If it did, give me a thumbs up, share it with any of your artsy friends that may find this useful, and until next time, happy crafting!